really talk about this. Another thing I want to be I want to bring up is just sort of finish our crimes acronym. And if you were here with me last time, we talked a little bit about crimes. And then uh, we're going to close out the show. If anybody have, nobody else is going to call today, the number is 646-595-3275. If you're somebody who is an atheist, uh, materials, uh, uh, agnostic in some way, and you believe that science does not and cannot prove God, I want to hear your thoughts why. And I'm going to say something radical here, and I agree with my friend Adam who called up and was kind of co-hosting with me. If, in fact, we have God, or science, if we have science, then we need God to understand science because within science, there's interpretation. With interpretation, there is reasoning. Well, how do you reason? What does it even mean to reason? What does it mean to think logically? Ladies and gentlemen, you are controlled. <laughs> oh, you're not controlled in the sense that you're a robot. You can say whatever you want. In fact, you could break the laws of logic. But the point is, there's a laws of logic, people. Okay? There is a laws of logic that, that controls you. You do not go to your children and teach them any different than the law of non-contradiction. You teach them that all day long. What happens to you when you're a kid? And I'm, I'm talking to you now, atheist. What happens to you when your kid walks up to you and he does something wrong? And the kid said, he's got his hands behind his back or he's got a guilty look. And here's exactly the stinking words that come out of our mouth. Are you ready? What happened here? And ready? Say it with me. You tell me the truth. <laughs> Don't we command the truth? Don't we demand the truth out of our children? Ladies and gentlemen, you live as Christians. You don't live as an atheist. You don't live as somebody who is agnostic and doesn't know if God exists because there's objectivity to our morality and our logic. And that has to have an accountability. That didn't come out of the thin blue. You know why? Because things like morality and logic are immaterial. They're immaterial. They are not made out of matter. So don't try to stick matter in something that's immaterial. I'm sorry, it doesn't work. If you are an atheist, you cannot account for logic, science, and morality. You can't. Now, I didn't say, because I know I'm going to be accused of this. I notice how I did not say that you can't do science and you don't have morality and you aren't logical. I didn't say that. What I said was you can't account for it. Now, just think about the worldview for a minute. The worldview says in atheism or materialism or whatever you want to label yourself that all we are is material. We are stardust. We are protoplasm. Uh, 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 Charles Darwin said it best. We are the, part of the simple cell program. Uh, he called it the simple cell because he couldn't see deeper past the first layer of the cell. It looked like a blob at a microscope. But now with, with technology, technologically advanced telescopes, we can see that the cell has many parts to it. In fact, it looks like a machine working together. It's incredible. But guys, I digress. That's not even my point. The point is, you don't act like that worldview. None of you. In fact, if you disagree with me, I want you to call the show. 646-595-3275. That's 646-595-3275. I will say this. Atheism cannot account or explain life. It can't. And just because you can explain life doesn't mean that atheism gave you that answer. Now, God gave you that answer. 
You better read Romans chapter 1, 18 through 20. It's very clear that God has revealed himself to you, his invisible attributes, his creation, and his eternal power and Godhood. You are the product of God's creation. And your thinking is a reflection of an immaterial, all-knowing, supernatural God. It's the only way we can have it. Guys, atheism cannot explain life. Never has and it never will. You're stuck. You're stuck in your worldview thinking, well, obviously it does because I use it. Now, come on. That's not very good reasoning at all. That's a fallacy. And what you're doing is you're ignoring the very ontological question. Why do we have it? I can tell you, I can tell you what doesn't explain it. Materialism can't explain it. Can't explain why we reason and we have logic at all. Anyway. I think I might be going a little too much on it. This is Chad the Challenger on Million Percent Radio. If you want to call in, the number is 646-595-3275. That's 646-595-3275. I had a couple guys with me on today, and it was a great conversation. If you're a scientist out there, and you disagree with the description of the show, or you have questions or concerns or just want to speak your mind, please call up. But going back to what I'm saying, listen... You can't do science without God. You can't. God is required because objectivity is required. Being good and moral is required. Thinking object objectively in logic is required. You don't put that stuff in a test tube. You have to assume those things in order to do science. It's really quite fascinating when you think about it. And when, if you're a Christian and you're listening to me today, <clears throat> you're all the more interested in listening because this should uplift you. This should make you glorify God. The heavens declare the glory of God. As a brilliant writer put it in the Bible, we are the product of a great created God. Check out my last show. If you go into the archive, if you go to blog talk radio slash CC radio network, you'll see a Kent Hovind link there. If you click on it, that was my guest, Kent Hovind. He is probably the leading expert in debate amongst creationists and evolutionists, and it was so good. In fact, you better go on and check him out on YouTube. You can go to Second Peter 3. Actually, you just type in 2peter3.com. You can also go to YouTube and also freekenthoven.com. He was actually put in prison for nine years. Quite a fascinating story. And I don't believe it was his fault. You can read the story for yourself. I won't get into it. Well, hey, I'm going to dive into a little more about what we talked about last time. If uh, nobody else has any thoughts on this topic, again, the number is 646-595-3275. I want to dive into a little more about reasoning and logic and why we reason and logic. And by the way, the little acronym that I taught you, CRIMES, and I didn't, uh, I'm not going to take, uh, I'm not going to take credit for it. It was uh, actually taught by a gentleman by the name of Frank Turek. You can check him out at cross-examined with an ED at the end, .org. He's got a lot of powerful apologetics for the creation and Christian side. Now, he taught this fascinating little acronym called CRIMES, C-R-I-M-E-S. And I'm going to go through it quickly because I had already gone through most of them. And I'll just quickly sum up what we talked about last time. The C in CRIMES stands for free choice, free choice. Free choice. Well, what does that mean? Well, the fact that we have free choice, we're somehow outside of our brain. You're not just a product of brain chemistry. Otherwise, it would be random and what your brain wanted. Not some uh, uh, means of a person, your inner person or a work of a soul, uh, which really is the, the inner working of a person. The fact that you can make decisions based on your morality and your beliefs. That's all free choice. You can't have that with evolution because evolution is chemicals changing in time and all you're really doing is reacting to previous natural causes. 
So it's two problems with evolution. Number one, we're just random. We're random molecules bumping into one another. Just brains fizzing. And I actually had somebody, well, well, a consensus. Most people believe that killing is wrong. Well, hold on. What does that have to do with it? How do we know that that's good at all? Anyway, we'll get into that morality in a second. The second letter in crimes is R, stands for reasoning. We were just talking about that, how we can reason and comprehend. That can't happen by molecules bumping into one another, people. I can promise you that is not the product of evolution. you got to go back and learn what evolution is. And I'm talking about the macro sense. And of course, you got to redefine what you mean by evolution. There's six definitions of evolution. <clears throat> the I in crime stands for information. I mean, come on, guys. DNA. Incredibly complex software that's built into our bodies to give us information about who we are and what we look like. That's incredible. That is a written code required by a coder. The fact that we could put letters and numbers in order. If you walked on the beach, and this is Frank Turek's, by the way, I'm just stealing it. If you walked on the beach and saw a big heart written in the sand, and in the middle of that heart, it says, John loves Mary, you don't, you don't assume that the crabs came and wrote that. <laughs> okay? Nature didn't create that. You assumed a mind wrote that. And the fact that we can comprehend it and its information re requires something to be able to, to produce a mind that's outside of materialism. Hmm. I wonder who can give us that. Sorry, a little sarcastic there. The M for crime stands for morality. Morality. Look, this is easy. There's right and there's wrong. You know, uh, if you're listening out there, Christian, and you're wondering how to deal with this whole morality issue, just ask the skeptic this question. Is it always wrong to torture children for fun? Just let them answer that question. Is it always wrong? And they're going to say, yes, if they're smart. Okay. And they're going to say, of course, it's wrong to murder children just for fun. Okay. Well, if it's wrong to murder children for fun, how do you know that? Who said that it's wrong to torture children for fun? Well, you say, uh, well, the President of the United States and its, and its cabinet and its uh, people. Well, that's why we have laws against it. Okay, but their brains aren't fizzing the same way I'm fizzing. Are you going to blame me if I do torture a child for fun? Come on, morality is a big, big problem for atheists. Let's go to the E in crimes, which is evil. Look, most people would assume that E for evil disproves God in some way, but it really does not. It really doesn't, and I'll tell you why. What does evil presuppose? It presupposes good, and you can't have God, you can't have good without God. And then finally, S for science, and of course we talked a lot about that in length of the show today. Science proves God's existence. Well, not the science experience necessarily. What I mean by that is... You need God to be able to do science. I'm just using science in a general sense that that is a great way to prove God's existence. Look, if you're bringing your bubblers, beakers, and your pens and papers, you better be bringing your morality. And if your morality is a lying one, you're going to get caught and you will be in trouble. And of course, as a materialist, you can say, wait a minute. Why lying on experiment is wrong? That's just the way my brain chemistry works. They're not going to listen to that any more than the next guy. And that's because you need God for science. You need objective morality. You need objective logic. You need objective math. People, those are all immaterial realities. They don't come from material. Will you please understand this? It's so important that you cannot do science without God. Well, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I'm going to be closing down the show now with just a quick thought. 
And the, the thought is this. When Jesus said to the Pharisees and the